There is chest voice and there is a second type of chest voice sound that makes it way easier for you to pull your chest voice higher, higher, way higher. The activity of the cricoarytenoid lateralis muscle makes it way easier to pull your chest voice higher, the chest voice sound, and that is because it doesn't pull against the range muscle. It's not an antagonist to the cricothyroid muscle. Here's the detailed explanation why and how. Do -ka -do -a. Hi folks, I'm Voba. I'm a singer and a vocal trainer, and this is my channel about anatomical vocal training. Now, chest voice, the baby's cry, ah, as described in that video, is the pull against the range muscle because the range muscle pulls the vocal cords on pitch, pulls them longer, and the muscle that creates vocal, uh, that creates chest voice, is the antagonist to that muscle which pulls the vocal cords shorter. That's why the vocal uh, cord muscle, the, the muscle that pulls the vocal cords long, always needs to be stronger than the muscle that pulls the vocal cords short, which creates uh, chest voice, which I explain in depth in this video. Now, what I want to explain today is there is a type of chest voice that is not a pull against the, the range muscle, and therefore you can carry that way, way higher with that uh, type of sound. Now, it's not really what I would call chest voice because chest voice is literally, in my definition, the pull against the, the range muscle, but it's something that sounds very, very similar to chest voice because it has a different effect because it tenses the vocal cords. Now, what I'm talking about is the cricoarytenoid lateralis. So that muscle is at the, at the side of the cricoid and goes to the arytenoid cartilages. And it kind of like when it contracts, it kind of like closes the vocal cords because it tilts the arytenoid cartilages towards one another. Now that's a different close than when the arytenoid cartilages move towards one another, right? It's more like a twist of the arytenoid cartilages. And therefore, when the arytenoid cartilages are closed already, and then you pull this, this muscle, you activate that muscle, what happens is that when they're closed, then they kind of like rotate inwards and then they just uh, tense the vocal cords more so that the vocal cords clap harder against one another. And clapping harder against one another means they close longer than they open, um, which I explain in depth in that video, why that, you know, is, is, uh, has a louder effect. Um, and they clap harder against one another and uh, therefore it sounds much more like chest voice. Now here is the difference. Now for me it's very difficult to do the difference be without um, opening my throat wider. Always when I go to chest voice, I want to make everything even a little wider. So I try to not pull it wider when, when I went to chest voice from the cricoarytenoid uh, lateralis pull. Because um, the cricoarytenoid lateralis, it makes it everything, it makes everything more sharp, right? So you can have it even more sharp and, and on top of that more round and then that makes a really, really, like, really similar sound to chest voice. So when I go... Ah! Whew, um, you see how I pulled it wide, but then I lost the, the sharpness a bit, and then I put it back in there, and then I lost it again, and I put it back in there. So the, that is the, the lateralis together with a bit more wideness and that makes it the, your voice really sound like chest voice right in in comparison to which would be chest voice um and then i'll i will make another video also about chest voice being less sharp but just like a duller type of chest voice 
which you leave the vocal edge, the interior vocal edge out, vocal edge, interior vocal edge, I explain in depth in this video. Um, but for now, um, I just wanted to get the point across that you can learn and you need to firstly go through all my um, entire playlist and to really learn these little um, muscle motor skills uh, in order to be that advanced because it's a very advanced thing, right? To to have even the difference between uh, crack baritone or lateralis and chest voice is for like super advanced people. <laughs> it's, it's not something you will start off with. Uh, you will start off with learning these little motor skills so you know how to, you know, close the remoglotides, pull everything wide, widen the, the thyroid cartilage, um, like strengthen your yawning muscle, st stretch your swallowing muscle, all these little motor exercises need to be established firmly in your body, opening up, you know, raising the sternum with uh, focus on the behind. All these little exercises are so essential for you to even remotely be able to hear the difference between chest voice and a vocal edge and then make a difference between chest voice and cricoarytenoid lateralis action. Because you will feel that with the lateralis, ah, ah, you can go even higher than with chest voice. With chest voice, ah, ah, it's difficult to go higher than that for me. You know, like A is like, where I'm like comfortable. I could pull it probably till E, but it's like uncomfortable. And since I have the lateralis action, which makes everything like so sh super sharp, I don't really need to pull chest voice higher than like an A. Um, maybe a, a C if I want to be like a high tenor. <laughs> um, but my point is this type of chest voice makes the room um, Flur, it goes like, it's really intense, it's really loud, and it's a way of loudness that can easily be pulled higher even than your highest chest voice sound. And therefore, for very advanced students, it's really, really nice to have this difference between chest voice and the cricolateralis um, action because it's a form of head voice, right? It's a form of head voice, even though it sounds like this is so sharp. Why? Well, what are you talking about head voice, <laughs> right? But it is a form of head voice in my anatomical definition, which I explain in depth in that video. Now, I hope this helps you a bit to understand, you know, the things that you can learn with knowing all these little muscles, with understanding what muscle does what and, and what kind of sound to derive how. Um, the lateralis, I, I don't go in how to do that in, in, in here because you first have to do vocal edge, interior vocal edge, and then you have to do that more and more intensely and then you, mean you will come to be able to do lateralis, crico arytenoid lateralis sound more and more. But that's like, a, yeah, that's a process. So if that information helps you, please subscribe to my channel and like my video and I hope to see you around. Don't go yet, here's some important information. If this is all a bit out of context for you and you don't know quite how to put all of this together, I have created a playlist. A playlist of the full anatomical vocal training so that you understand from beginning to end, you know, where it starts, why this muscle, why that muscle, because some of the videos that I'm doing out of context, they might be like, why are you doing this, right? So if you go to my channel, you will go to the playlists and then you will find the full anatomy playlist uh, right there. And it has everything from start to beginning, why to stretch what muscle groups, how to stretch them, why to begin there, or what to do. So it's kind of like a chronological order so that you can really have a full understanding of the whole thing that I'm teaching here. So check it out, I see you over there.